What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another Celestial Storm deck profile and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Swampers, the card I've personally been pretty excited about and one of, I think some of the community has been a little excited to see as well so I definitely want to cover it here on the channel and actually this is the same list we did feature in our recent testing rounds video so if you guys actually want to see how this deck looks in action I will have a link to that below in the description for you to check out. And if you're unfamiliar with those testing rounds videos that we post, they usually feature kind of our early unrefined uh, starting points to begin testing with. So that means there might be a few things in here we could potentially tweak or improve upon. So just something to keep in mind as we do go through this early deck profile. So this is going to be Swampert though, let's take a look at it. We have four Mudkips of course, and it is very important to note we are choosing to play the 70 HP one that we got out of Celestial Storm. There is another one, but it only has 60 HP, which means things like Buzzwill. And, uh, you know, other Pokemon are going to be able to more easily knock it out. So we just want that extra little tankiness that the 70 HP is going to give us. Uh, next up, we are playing two copies of Marsh Stomp. Nothing special about this one in particular. It's just going to help us get into our Swampers. And then, of course, Swamper, our main attacker of the deck, four of this guy. So let's take a look at it. It's 160 HP, weak to grass, three retreat cost. 160 HP in particular is pretty nice in a lot of situations. But let's take a look at really the meat of the card. What makes this card actually worth building a deck around? And it has this ability, I believe it roughly translates to power draw. Once during your turn before you attack, you may discard a card from your hand and draw three cards. So this probably looks very similar to Zorark GX. It's almost the same ability, but a strict upgrade to it. So trade on Zorark only gives you two, which has seen a ton of success. You know, Swamper is going to give you three, though, which makes some sense. It is a stage two, so it's good that Pokemon at least is rewarding you for you know, getting out this more difficult Pokemon by giving you a better ability. So this is nice. Once you usually get one to two Swamperts online, this deck really takes off and it's actually not uncommon to deck out. I've actually played probably, I don't know, maybe like 10 to 20 games with this thing at this point. And uh, I've actually gotten dangerously close to decking out on a number of occasions. So power draw is definitely no joke. Uh, like I said, especially once you get a couple of these Swamperts in play. So it has a great ability, but let's take a look at its attack. For three colorless energy, does 80 plus 20 more for each water energy attached to Swampert. So, you know, we pile a bunch of energy on the Swampert, we can take ideally some one-hit knockouts. So let's run through the math just real quick. With three water energy and a choice band, you're doing 170, which is a great number to hit for uh, because you can knock out basic GXs like Tapu Lele. Similarly, if you have one extra energy, that's gonna allow you to hit for 190, which is a crazy good number to hit for because you can knock out things like Buzzwell GX, Ultra Necrozma GX, etc. So, and luckily water actually does have some decent support as far as energy acceleration goes. And so I think we do have some ways to get Swampert up and running. And especially once we do get out our Swamperts, Power Draw will hopefully allow us to draw into the resources that we need. So that is going to be pretty much our sole attacker in the deck, but we are playing some support Pokemon in this list. Uh, the first of which is going to be a 1-1 Mag Cargo line. This is another new Pokemon that we're getting out of Celestial Storm, one I'm incredibly excited for. Uh, we all gushed over this in our set review, so if you guys haven't watched that, definitely go check that out as well. But the reason this card is so good with Swampert, it has this ability smooth over once during your turn before you attack. You may search your deck for a card and put it on top of your deck. Well, shuffle your deck first, then put that card on top. So you can see the synergy here. We use Smooth Over to grab a card, put it on top of our deck, and use Power Draw to draw that card and two others that we could potentially use as well. So it's just going to be uh, you know, a, another consistency boost in the mid to late game once we get this guy online. Uh, we're also playing one copy of Alolan Vulpix. So we're playing this exclusively for that beacon attack for a whopping zero energy. You get search your deck for two Pokemon, put them in your hand, shuffle your deck afterward. So this is going to allow us to, you know, maybe just kind of wall behind this Vulpix in the first turn or so and grab our evolution pieces and things that we need to get set up. Very similar to what we've seen in other decks in the past like Gardevoir, Metagross, etc. And then to round out the Pokemon line, guys, just two copies of Tapu Lele GX. Of course, for that Wonder Tag ability, it's going to allow us to search out supporters out of our deck. We don't play double color synergy or any great way to accelerate energy to Tapu Lele, so we're not really going to use Energy Drive or Tapu Cure, pretty much, like I said, just for that ability. So next up, going on to our supporters, we have four copies of N. We are a pretty slow deck, actually, and it's very... Uh, common for this deck to go down on two to three prizes before it really swings into action and starts uh, putting on a lot of pressure. So that's why we're playing the high count of N, just to punish our opponent for getting those really aggressive starts against us. 
but we're still playing three copies of Cynthia as well. Not playing any copies of Sycamore in this deck. We have just, I think, way too many moving pieces. So we're exclusively playing these shuffle draw options. So Cynthia is just a more stable form of draw support. Shuffle your hand into your deck, draw six. So also just a nice form of draw support. Maybe in the late game when we only have one or two prizes left, we might prefer Cynthia over in. Next up, we have three copies of Guzma here, just to choose what we want to take knockouts on, of course. And then we have two copies of Bridget as well, uh, just so we can get set up. And we really want to get as many Mudkips into play uh, early on as possible. So that's why we are playing two of this. So pretty straightforward Pokemon and supporter lines so far. Let's head over to our item cards and see what we have going on. So of course, we have four Ultra Ball just to search Pokemon out the deck. Pretty straightforward and this is a rare candy based deck and evolution deck so we need some rare candies so for rare candy let's just skip those marsh stomps and go straight into our swampers to start getting set up as quick as possible then like i said we do need some ways to power up swampert and luckily water actually has pretty good support in that area right now because of aqua patch so you can attach a water energy from your discard to one of your benched water pokemon so even though we're not playing anything like Professor Sycamore, we have Ultra Ball to throw away our water energies, we have Power Draw on Swampert to discard water energies, and we can just get them right back with Aqua Patch. And that's going to allow us to, you know, stack a bunch of energy onto our Swamperts to ideally take some one-hit knockouts. And next up, we have four copies of Puzzle of Time as well. So we're playing Puzzle kind of for a similar reason that Azura Arc decks do. You know, a lot of decks, I think, will struggle to find, you know, two copies of Puzzle of Time in their hand at the same time. But since, you know, much like Azura Arc, we have this extra form of draw power, it's really not that hard to get the second Puzzle of Time in your hand, especially since we also have Mag Cargo to search out puzzles too. So if you guys aren't too familiar with it, it's one of these dual effect cards. If you play just one, you get to look at the top three cards for your deck, put them back in any order. But more importantly, if you play two at the same time, you get any two cards out of your discard pile back into your hand, which is actually really big because that allows us to potentially Aqua Patch up to eight times in a game, which is absolutely nuts. And I actually had a build of the deck without Puzzle of Time uh, for a little bit. But then once I put this in here, I immediately noticed a huge boost in the quality of this deck. So just a great card, like I said, especially since we can pretty easily search out both pieces of Puzzle of Time in this deck. So next up, we have two copies of Choice Band here, just to increase our damage output onto GXs and EXs. Very important to help us take those big one-hit knockouts. We have two copies of Floatstone, just to give ourselves free retreat. Uh, Floatstone actually an incredibly important card, just because we do need a Pokemon with free retreat to be able to make great use of Aqua Patch a lot of the time. Uh, just because we want to be able to have a Swampert on the bench to Aqua Patch to, and then freely retreat into Swampert to start attacking. Uh, next up, two copies of Field Lore to discard our opponent's opposing tool cards in stadiums. We're really not too worried about things like Choice Ban, but this is going to be very handy against decks that run the Garber Tox and Garbutter, being able to get rid of their tool cards to make sure that we can use our abilities. Also, in the early game, sometimes Parallel City can be a very annoying card. In the mid to late game, honestly, Parallel City really isn't a big deal, but in the early game, if your opponent gets one out quick, it can sometimes really make your setup very awkward. So I want to have some outs to dealing with those as well. And then just as a form of recovery, we have one copy of Rescue Stretcher in the deck. This is actually a card I wouldn't mind a second copy of, but we do have Puzzle of Time to potentially reuse this if we do need to. So we get three Pokemon back into our deck, or one right back into our hand. And since we have Aqua Patch to get energies out of our discard pile, I think Stretcher is going to be superior to Super Odd in this particular type of deck. And that's going to be it for the trainer cards, guys. Going on to our energy around the list, we have four, eight copies of water energy in total. Uh, kind of a low count, it might seem, just because we do need a bunch of energy to power up Swampers. But you have to remember, we can actually reuse all of these with Aqua Patch. So that's something to keep in mind. We don't really need that many physical copies of the card since we can just reuse them with Aqua Patch. And even though we're playing the eight copies of Water Energy, we are actually playing two copies of Counter Energy as well. This is actually another big MVP in the deck. Like I said, Swampert usually is going to go down on prizes before its opponent. Usually in my case, I've said about... I'd say around two to three prizes you lose before you really spring into full gear. And at that point, you can actually make great use of counter energy. So if we run through the math real quick, with counter energy, two water energy, and choice band, we can hit for 190, which is a pretty important number to hit for in the current metagame. And that may sound like a lot, but honestly, it's really not that hard to get these pieces going. 
figure if you have one energy on a Swamper already and your opponent is jumping ahead, next turn you Aqua Patch, Counter Energy, Choice Ban, and between all of your power draws and that cargo and just your regular draw support, you can usually draw into the pieces that you need. So like I said, another just really key card that's helped out this deck a lot after I started testing with it. But yeah, guys, that is going to be uh, our look at Swampert. This is a deck I've been really having a ton of fun with. It kind of reminds me of a hybrid between Gardevoir and Greninja, as weird as that sounds. Like, it has the kind of setup engine that Gardevoir variants have had in the past with the, you know, two counts of Bridget, the little Invulpix. But then it's also kind of similar to Greninja in the sense that you're just kind of sacrificing Pokemon in the first couple turns until you get your evolutions into play. And that's really when the deck takes off but it's definitely like i said it's been a lot of fun and actually if you're interested in swamper i've actually written an entire article exclusively for our stage two patrons and higher over at patreon.com slash rare candy tcg so if you want to learn more about swamper and some other potential deck building options and techs and things like that i will have a link to that below in the description but that's going to be it for this one guys definitely stay tuned to the channel we're going to have a ton of celestial storm coverage over the next several weeks but as usual feel free to like and subscribe and if you can support this channel by becoming a patron like i mentioned over at patreon.com slash rare candy tcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com it would mean a lot but with that i appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one